Hello. Today we're going to be talking about making apps for Plus Merchants. How do you make a Plus Ready app? Everything that entails. My name is Steve Hasse. I'm a solutions engineer at Shopify Plus. That means I'm not a real engineer, but I talk to people as though I am. Just kidding. Uh, but I do speak with high volume merchants every day. And most of them need something outside of what Shopify offers. So solutions engineers like myself and other members of my team are making suggestions all the time about how to handle those requirements. And that's where you, as an app builder, as a partner in our ecosystem, that's where you come in. So the specific topics are what makes Plus Merchants different? How do you establish trust with them? And specifically, what to consider? I have the five S's for you to remember. So how are they different? Let's take a look at some numbers. Uh, what we have here are some stats based on the 75th percentile of Shopify merchants versus Shopify Plus merchants. So 75% of our merchants meet these numbers. On Shopify average daily orders, we have two versus 82 over the whole year. This was for 2016. Average weekly orders, four versus 512. What we're seeing here then is that Plus Merchants have a going concern. They have a business that is really active. It's not just a startup that they're testing an idea with or that they're gaining some traction with. They are really moving. Um, what this also means is that there's more back-end activity and logistics to manage. In fact, if we look at our outliers, the top 1%, right, just the smallest handful that are doing the most volume on both uh, plans, the numbers are obscene, 15,000 average daily orders over the course of the entire year with those handful of outliers on plus versus 3,000 at the top tier within the Shopify uh, plans. So that means a couple of things. There's more back-end activity, logistics, complexity to manage for plus merchants. It also means that your app has to solve for scale. Some other interesting numbers, again, at the 75th percentile, Shopify merchants have 130 products in their collections, in their, in their store, whereas with Plus, 1,686 collections, 14 versus 164. Uh, so again, this is more complexity to manage on the front end. How are you going to help them manage discovery, search, display? Those are bigger concerns for Plus merchants with over 1,600 products on average at the 75th percentile versus 130. And right to the heart of it, let's talk about apps. On Shopify, seven apps, again, at the 75th percentile, versus on Plus, 27 apps. Now, installed does not mean they're paying for them or currently in use, but it does mean that they're present in their store. This tells me a couple of things. First of all, that finding a solution to a certain problem will provide a significant, even if incremental, revenue lift for Plus merchants. Remember, they have those orders coming through, they have that traffic coming through, they have that going concern. So finding an app that's going to give them just a little bit more leverage will make a material difference on their business. Whereas with a Shopify merchant, you know, smaller traffic, smaller numbers, the apps might not have as big of an impact over time. In fact, when we speak with our merchants, what we often find is they'll test a bunch of things just to see what gives them a little bit of extra uh, impact on their conversions, on their email signups, on their customer retention. Uh, they're very engaged with the app ecosystem. This number includes apps built by Shopify itself, so wholesale, scripts, order printer, etc. So the difference is, to summarize, there's more at stake, there's more complexity, and there's a greater usage of apps. So to make it into that group of apps that a merchant is going to use, you have to establish trust. So how do you do that? Let's talk about some of the basics and, and what a plus merchant is looking for in terms of establishing trust. As you know, trust is everything. Um, their business is running, it's in process. It's not something that might succeed, it's something that has to continue. It has to be seamless when they come over to Shopify Plus. Um, they don't want to experiment with your app, they want something that they know will work. 
So if you put yourself in the shoes of the merchant, right, they might be coming from a custom platform, they might be coming from one of our competitor apps. It's stressful enough to replatform. So your, your app needs to alleviate that stress, need to make it a seamless experience, not add to it. Tom Hagen, Consigliere from The Godfather. That is the role that I play, sometimes. That's the role that my colleagues play. We are always, you know, we are trusted advisors to the merchants who are coming to us. So whether it's during the sales process, during the launch process, during post-launch, we're always trying to solve problems for our merchants. They come to us, they say, how do I do X, Y, Z? And then I come up with a solution, or the launch manager, or the merchant success manager. So if your app solves a problem that we're presented with, guess what we're going to recommend? Right? It often comes down to a build versus buy, especially with plus merchants. They might have the resources either internally or in their budget to build. But if your app nails it, or if your app can be modified to suit it, we're going to absolutely recommend that they you know, do their due diligence or even just give it an even stronger recommendation, like just use this thing because it's exactly what you need. So how do you gain that trust? How do you become front of mind for, for us or even for um, you know, word of mouth for, for the other merchants who are uh, talking about what do you use? How do you solve this problem? How do you gain that trust? To begin with, you have to commit to the solution. You have to be the best one at solving that particular problem. So dive deep into the needs of that problem and develop a great solution for it. For example, Avalara. They have the Avatax uh, product, which we have partnered completely with them for uh, uh, Plus merchants. Basically, when you sign on with Plus, you get an Avatax subscription with your, uh, with your subscription. But just take a look at how deeply they have dived into this problem. If you look at their server time, right, very fast, 0 0.065 seconds. Uh, they're managing a lot of scale. At their max, they have over 2,800 calculations per second. And just look at the complexity that they're helping remove from the merchant's plate, right? 139 billion permutations of the tax code that they just respond with instantly. So they remove stress from the merchant's day. It's a plug and play integration because they work so closely with us because it's so seamless that's going to be part of building that trust. The next thing I'd encourage you to do is be part of our team. What I mean by that is, is the best app providers in our ecosystem, I feel like they're part of our team. I call on them, I know who they are, I've worked with them, um, we've maybe done a training with them, I might have met them, they might have come to the Waterloo office or one of the other Shopify offices, done a lunch and learn with our team. Um, we are connected, right? It's not a, someone's out there. It's a, yes, these guys are awesome. This team is amazing. In fact, we might even be on sales calls together. So what that means for you is get good at being merchant facing, right? Don't assume that because you have a great tool, you're gonna to be set. With Plus Merchants, it's more high touch. You might need to talk about your solution with them. You might need to be part of the sales process to help them make the choice for Shopify. And finally, reviews. They really matter, right? Maybe we don't know the exact solution or the exact app or the exact team, so then we're just searching through the app store like everybody else. We're going to look at the reviews. We're going to see how many five stars. What are the stores that have those five stars? Uh, and the difference between an app with 100 or more positive reviews and one that's only three or even zero is enormous. Uh, let's take an example here with Sweet Tooth. They've really invested in their app reviews. Over 2,200 reviews. Now, now Sweet Tooth is more of a platform than an app, but the same process applies even if you're solving a smaller problem. What they have done is they prioritize it, they bake those reviews into their system. So if someone is talking to customer support and they have a good experience, customer support says, hey, we'd love it if you leave a review. They send out automated emails at certain app usage milestones. So when somebody has, let's say, 100 customers who have redeemed reward points, then they get an email from Sweet Tooth saying, hey, we see you're seeing success with our app. We'd love it if you left us a review. And so then they have a ridiculous number of reviews in the App Store, which makes a difference. 
So to summarize, when it comes to trust, commit to the solution, be part of our team. I'm gonna share a link about how you can do that. We, we created a form for you to be in touch with us. I'll share that later in the presentation. And invest in your social proof. All right, the part you've been waiting for, the five S's. My name is Steve, so I needed an alliteration with S. It's just the way I work. So here they are. Uh, specifically, when you're building for plus merchants, invest in support, seamlessness, sophistication, security, and scale. I'll talk about each of those in order. Support, 24 seven, ideally. At the very least, figure out what your internal SLAs are. How quickly are you planning on responding to inquiries? Write it down so that everybody knows how fast are we gonna respond. You might not share that publicly, maybe pad it a little with, with what you share you know, for expectations and the, the public number, but um, have it as part of your system. How quickly are you gonna respond? Also, during business hours, have a phone line, right? Can you do that? If so, do it. It helps enormously. I know for myself, if I'm uh, researching an app on behalf of a merchant, I have a particular question that wasn't answered in the docs or in the video or the screenshots, I'll call them up and say, can I do this thing? Even if you were going to respond within five minutes to my email, being able to talk to someone is next level. Right, so again, it's investing in that support, it's investing in that trust, and it makes a difference. Have great FAQs. I can't tell you how many times I've been on a sales call and I have looked really smart because the app provider has provided me with great FAQs. You know, so they'll say, can this tool do such and such? And I'll quickly Google it and I'll say, yes it can, here's a link. And that feels awesome for me, feels awesome for them, it builds trust, and I'm allowed to continue with the sales process. Also, back to the point of being merchant-facing, do you have a sales rep? If we need to hand them over to you for another conversation or for due, due diligence, is there a person that we know that we can just send and they're gonna take that from a cold intro to a new customer for you? Also figure out what your disaster plan is. Um, we had an app that went down and a merchant's checkout was actually unusable for, uh, for a period of a day. And they didn't hear from anybody. Like software goes down, we understand. But not hearing from anyone is the problem. And this is a merchant who is usually, or sorry, it's an app developer who is usually so responsive that I was, I was shocked that it took this long to respond. So what is your plan when everything goes wrong? How do you continue that trust and maintain that relationship? Seamlessness. The number one most important thing, there are two most important things you can do for seamlessness. To begin, embed your app with our embedded app SDK. Make sure that it is part of the admin. If you use it, it will also show up in Shopify mobile app. It'll show up in Shopify desktop app. You will be part of their admin. It will be seamless. Also, invest in the app design. Make sure that it's professional, that it flows nicely, that it looks like the rest of Shopify. They're going to be judging you by the standards that we have set. So our wholesale app, uh, scripts app, make sure it looks professional, not janky. Uh, we're giving you the Polaris and the, uh, you know, the UI kit design system. So use those tools, use those elements to make sure that the experience is seamless for your merchants when they're using your app. Sophistication. Remember the difference in order numbers. Um, the plus merchant is going to have more moving parts. They're going to have a very sophisticated operation. And so your app needs to reflect that same sophistication, especially if it's touching those parts that are going to be uh, more sensitive than a regular Shopify merchant. For instance, inventory. A plus merchant is most likely gonna have their inventory in an ERP. It's going to live outside of Shopify. So don't do weird things to inventory. No shadow skews, no, um, uh, you know, anything that would mess up that system. Uh, there was an app a while ago that, that did exactly that, screwed up inventory across four different warehouses. It took days for the merchant to fix in those different warehouses. So that would be a bad thing. 
Also with sophistication, consider clone stores when building your app. Most Plus merchants will have at least one clone store, whether it's for international, multi-currency, um, you know, different reasons for, for launching whole, uh, clone stores. So build your app with that in mind. Does it sync with multiple stores? Can it aggregate data across stores? Those will be value adds. And with sophistication, can your app do more than just what it does out of the box? Do you offer an API or some kind of extensibility for custom functionality? That's going to be a big win for Plus Merchants. We had a recent high profile deal where the vendor we were working with created exactly what the merchant needed and that's what allowed us to actually land that business. Had it not been for their APIs and their ability to, 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 to extend Shopify's functionality and their own functionality in the way that the vendor or that the uh, merchant needed exactly, we would have lost that deal. And it's, it's a, a big high profile deal. So that was crucial. If you can do that, you will win everybody's hearts and minds towards your app. And finally, for data connectors, we generally don't recommend uh, plug and play connectors because a plus merchant's needs are going to be greater. Uh, so the Zapiers of the world or, or things that sort of shuffle data from one side to the other. Um, with plus merchants, they need high touch solutioning, data gathering, you know, getting the full system requirements in place. So that's just a note on data. Security. Bigger customers ask, right? The Nestle's of the world are going to want to know how secure is my entire platform, not just Shopify, but everything that I'm using to enhance the functionality. So how are you using customer data? How are you using order information? Are you requesting unnecessary information, scopes that your app doesn't need uh, about customers, orders? Also, how secure is your app platform? You may have solved these things, you may have it all dialed in, but you should share that. You should make it publicly available so that you can earn the trust of these bigger customers that are coming to Plus. And finally, scale. Remember the max order number. Average, right? At the, the top handful, 15,000 a day over the course of the whole year. As we've seen in the past, the current outliers often become more of the norm over time. So keep that in mind when you're building your app. Uh, a rule of thumb is, will a merchant need to turn this off for a flash sale? Will they be freaked out that you can't actually handle what's about to happen on their site? Um, if several Black Fridays ago, apps went down uh, and people couldn't check out on the stores that were using those apps. So, don't do that. <laughs> you know, we worked with those developers and the next year everything was fine. But as you're building that tool, just think Black Friday is going to be bigger than you had expected. And there are creative ways to scale. My colleague Nick Mulder will be presenting on uh, the technical ways to actually scale your app. And it doesn't just mean throwing more dollars at more servers. There are ways to actually set up the, uh, the, the scaling that doesn't just mean throw more dollars at servers. But again, keep in mind, you might have hundreds of thousands of API calls or incoming requests that you'll need to manage. The jobs shouldn't take days to complete or crash the app under the load. So make sure that you load test the app just to make sure that the system architecture that you've come up with will be able to handle that kind of load and remain performant. So again, the five S's, support, seamlessness, sophistication, security, and scale. I mentioned the link for getting in touch with us. So if your application is suited for Plus Merchants, if you think it would be a good fit and you want to be in conversation with us and in conversation with our merchants, let's talk. Go here, tell us why it should be reviewed and considered for internal suggestion and listing. So build a great app for Plus Merchants and you'll be happy that you did. We'll be happy that you did. And commerce will be better for everyone. Thank you very much.